Welcome to the CA Ops MVS Best Practices Video Ops Log. I'm Susan Kelly, Senior Information Engineer for the Ops MVS team. In this video, you will be introduced to the functions of the Ops Log feature of Ops MVS, including how to create, allocate, and control an Ops Log, the filtering capability, display columns, and how to copy or archive an Ops Log. OpsLog is a text-based chronological log of ZOS system activity. OpsLog can contain up to 18 different types of system events created by ZOS and OpsMVS. Messages, or WTOs, write to operator events, are the most common events in OpsLog. OpsLog can be used in place of syslog and contains more system activity events. OpsLog can contain up to 2,950,000 events. OpsLog is a linear vSAM data set which provides for quick navigation of the data. OpsLog is a very effective tool for determining ZOS system activity and is ideal for operations and programming staff to assist with their daily activities. OpsLog can be filtered by several different criteria including job name and message ID. Every event in OpsLog contains up to 53 additional fields of data that are specific to each event. OpsMVS supports the ability to have up to 32 OpsLogs active at a time. Multiple OpsLogs can be set up to contain restored OpsLog data. This allows you to have much more log data for quick access. We recommend at least one additional empty OpsLog to switch the logging to in order to avoid error. The OpsLog dataset is a linear vSAM dataset created using the IDCAMS utility program. Sample code to create the dataset is provided in the install dataset that ends with CCLXCNTL member def div. The size of the OpsLog dataset and the number of events to place into the OpsLog must correspond. The size is specified by the cylinders specification in the def div sample. The number of events is controlled by the ops MVS parameter browse max. A chart of how many DASD cylinders are needed for the number of events you desire can be found in the CA ops MVS install guide DASD calculation chart page. Allocate the ops log data sets in the ops MVS initialization member OPSSPA00. Sample allocation code is provided in the OPSSPA00 member found in the CCLX CNTL installation library. You control the data in the ops log by setting the value of ops MVS parameters that correspond to ZOS system and ops MVS generated events. The ops MVS Browse event parameters can be updated dynamically, but should ideally be set in the initialization parameter member OPSSPA00. The Ops MVS ISPF interface OpsView option 4.13 can be used to control and display multiple Ops logs. The Ops Rex address Ops CTL Ops log addressing environment can also be used to display and control an ops log or multiple ops logs for use. Filtering of an ops log is accomplished by using the ops log browse profile panels. Several filtering criteria can be specified, for example, by job name or message IDs. The job name, message ID, color, sysname, and user criteria support include and exclude capabilities. The same criteria also support a mask character, the asterisk, which can be specified as the end of job name or message ID. The ops log can be filtered by the type of system event or events that are detectable by ops MBS using the event profile section and by specifying a Y or N to include or not include. 
Once a filtering profile is specified, use the PF3 key to go back to the OpsLog data with the filter criteria. Filter criteria can be saved for later use by specifying a profile ID and issuing the save command. The OpsLog second level profile adds additional filtering capabilities to the log data that include case sensitive text scanning, filtering by AOF rules that have fired, specified by rule set dot rule name, filtering by address space identifier, and by the different event exit types designated by OxMVS. At any time, the current filtering criteria can be removed by issuing the primary command of clear. Here is an example for filtering ops log. We see the filtering will be on a job name with a mask, so all job names that start with OPST will only be displayed in the resulting ops log display. And this slide shows the result. There are up to 53 unique display columns or fields of data for each ops log event. The display column section list is displayed with a D primary command from ops log browse. The POS column is used to position the resulting chosen display columns in numeric sequence from left to right in the ops log browse panel. The information in the display columns can be unique for each ops log event and are displayed to the left based on which columns are selected of the text portion of the event. The OpsLog display column values can also be displayed by way of an ISPF pop-up panel by placing your cursor on the text area of any OpsLog event and pressing enter. The resulting panel contains all the display columns with their values in a scrollable panel. Many of these display columns are also mapped to AOF rule event variables for use in your automation rules. The OpsLog dataset is created and allocated based on a maximum number of events that can be displayed at any one point in time. When a new event is ready to be placed into the OpsLog, a check is performed to see if the maximum number of events has been reached. If it has, then the oldest event is deleted from the OpsLog to make space for the new event. This type of log data processing is referred to as a wrapping dataset. Because of this type of processing, the events in the ops log should be copied before they are deleted. This copying is referred to as archiving the ops log. OpsMVS provides a facility to perform ops log archiving based on the number of events placed into the ops log or by doing an archive based on the same time every day. The ops log archive facility is a separate subtask in the ops main address space. Archiving the ops log is accomplished by initiating a started task and customizing several parameter values that control the process. Once an ops log archive is complete, record of that archive activity is added to ops MDS global variables and tracked in the ops view ISPF interface option 7.1.4. A restore of the ops log data can be accomplished from this tracking facility. For more detailed information about CA Ops MVS, click on the icons to go to product documentation for more information or to share your feedback in the comments section of the Ops Log or best practices documentation. Click on support if you need more help. Head to the communities to share your knowledge. You can also follow the learning paths if you want to continue your education. We welcome your feedback and hope you will learn much more in the Best Practices video series and the other videos in the CA Ops MBS video suite.